Well, first of all, I just gotta say, I apologize for my voice. I was sick last week, I had a bad cold, and my voice is still recovering. So my biggest apologies if it's hard to hear me. I have an incredible haul that I wanna show you. I went estate sale shopping with Abigail from Abigail's Artful Abode. She's here on YouTube, so you should definitely give her a follow. And we met up in Washington earlier this year for the first time after being Instagram friends for years. And she is just as lovely in person as she is in her videos. We always have an absolute blast together shopping and we have so much in common, it's unbelievable. So she was coming down from Washington to the Portland area to do a sourcing weekend and our schedules just happened to line up so that I could go and hit some estate sales with her for the day. It was before I was sick so you'll hear some of my normal voice in the videos of us actually shopping and then apologies I will be cutting back to this. You know you can't plan when you're gonna get sick but I will say I'm just so glad I never got sick when we were over in Italy hosting the group trip so I feel like I can't complain. I am one step ahead of you because I already know what I find in these videos and I promise you today's estate sale shopping with Abigail is not going to disappoint. And before we get to the estate sale shopping, I have something exciting to tell you. I was interviewed for my first podcast ever. Thankfully, that was also before I got sick. It was so much fun. I was honestly really nervous to do it beforehand. I almost even thought about backing out and then I just kept telling myself, no, this is what it's all about. You got to push through that fear. You got to push through your insecurities and you gotta go for it. You have to create the life and the future you want for yourself. So I am very proud of myself for doing it and I really hope you enjoy listening to it. It's on the Get Thrifty podcast and I will link that here in the description below. Please give it a listen and support this amazing podcast. I actually had a really good time doing the interview and it kind of made me think maybe I should get into podcasting. It's something I've talked about for years. I don't think I have time for it right now, but we'll see. Give it a listen. Let me know if you think that I should try my hand at podcasting. Today, Abigail and I are going to be hitting up estate sales in Portland, Oregon. We found the estate sales on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, and a couple of them that we're going to hit today, we actually just spotted the signs. This first estate sale has so much good vintage jewelry. It's so hard to film while I'm estate sale shopping, especially because there's people behind us, so we gotta hurry. So I'm gonna show you the complete haul at the end, but let's just say I got quite a few things out of this jewelry case. I love going estate sale shopping. It's so fun to get to see inside someone's home. And I don't know what it is, but there's just something special about shopping these things that one person collected throughout a lifetime. I'm kind of dying inside right now in this moment because I think this might be an actual wound chair by Noel. I am not positive if this is authentic, but it is sold and I am so sad because I'm pretty sure that these sell for thousands. This is why I love estate sale shopping. You never know what you're gonna find, but you also have to be first in line.
somebody ahead of us got so lucky because this beautiful mid-century dresser is also already sold. I don't even know how much this was. They already took the price tag off of it, but we can still take a moment to appreciate how beautiful this is. Can you imagine how sweet I would have styled up this dresser with that chair? Oh, this one hurts. I love looking through old books and seeing the names and the dates and the little notes that are written inside of them. It's just something I always do whenever I go estate sale shopping. Apparently I'm very snoopy. <laughs> These vintage Levi jackets are definitely coming home with me. And I'm back at the jewelry box because I decided I need to bring home this Zuni fetish necklace. Show me what you got. <laughs> oh, it's not old, but I just like it. I think it's just really clean. Lines, it's beautiful. Is it made out of wood? Is it painted wood no, or is it pottery? It's ceramic. It's pottery. <gasps> Yeah, it's beautiful. And a little teeny totem. He's cute. <laughs> I heard that the the woman traveled in Alaska a lot. She was stationed there. Oh, oh. And I got somebody. two vintage Levi's. I knew these are cool. Aren't they great? Yes. But I'm the excited. Sherpa, the Sherpa. This one fits me good too. We are headed to estate sale number two. I came back to the car to get extra totes. There's a line to get in, but it looks like there's really good stuff we can already see in the windows. So I think it's going to be worth waiting in line. I'm going to get this hand stitched hide for only $5. These sell for around $40 or $50 and this one's in really good condition. And I am also going to get this set of copper. There's a couple in here I don't want, but it's $5 for the whole set. This house is completely packed. There are three floors and every single room you walk into is almost so full that only a couple people can be in each room. These are my favorite kinds of estate sales. You gotta get down and dig. Forever. Sweet. Six dollars. What if it was like pageant queens? Pageant queen. We could be pageant queens. See that one you could just wear over the neck. Yes. How? Oh, I'm gonna get some of these. Oh, does this have the name There's Noble Grand? <laughs> They're everywhere. I'm into these. Me too. Oh, cowboy boots. We ended up finding three different boxes of these Secret Society sashes, and both of us walked away with a handful of our favorites. They were only $3 each. I will show you the rest of these goodies in the bag as soon as we get back to the studio. After we hit the estate sales, we ended up stopping at a few more side of the road places and picked up a few more treasures. I 
could not believe how much Abigail and I both got. Some of the things we like are the same. Like if I would have come across that first, I would have picked it up. And if she would have come across what was in my hands, she would have picked it up. But the good thing is that there is always enough junk out there. I love thrifting with other people. I think it makes the whole experience so much more fun. And Abigail's an absolute blast to go picking with. She found some really good things. So if you want to watch her vlog, you can head to her YouTube channel and then you can see her complete haul because she ended up picking down here in Portland for the entire weekend. I just joined her for one day. First, I have to talk to you about the jewelry at the first estate sale because that blew my mind. The pricing was really good. A lot of the rings were only 20 to $25 and those are rings that I would value at closer to 75 to $100. I'll pull all of the jewelry out that I found throughout the whole day and give you a closer look at it. I got all of this jewelry there except for a couple of these pieces I actually got in Italy and I just wanted to show them to you really quickly because they're going to be coming to the July 7th first Friday sale and I just thought I'd pop them in real quick so you can see. Look how chunky this one is. That's solid sterling silver. It's incredible and a beautiful amber one and then these cute little kitties. So those are Italy finds. I just pulled them out because I thought, why not? But the rest of this, I got estate sale shopping in just a few stops. It's incredible. Look at these earrings. Oh my goodness. Let's see. These are Mexico, signed Mexico. I love when it's got the sterling silver inlaid with the stones. And of course, anything geometric, I'm gonna love. Got a beautiful Zuni animal fetish necklace. It's got all the little critters, beautiful triple brass chain. I think I'm actually gonna add something to this so that might not be in this sale. I think I have a beautiful pendant. I wanna add to that later. And then this cool, I think this is a Victorian style. I don't know if it's actually Victorian. It doesn't quite look like it, but this beautiful sterling hand pendant and it's got little charms on the bottom. It is missing one charm. There's an extra spot. So I don't know if I'll pop on another one. I do have some loose charms or maybe I will let the seller add their own charm to it. But I thought that was beautiful. Beautiful, delicate sterling and turquoise cuff. Some really cool rings. I love this one. And then got this one, which is cool. It's got a little arrow stamped in the top here. Beautiful green turquoise, amazing mother of pearl ring. I got these mother of pearl. They're kind of the pinky mother of pearl earrings. One of them's missing the ear wire, so I do need to add that. So those will probably be in the August sale. Beautiful designer bracelet. And then these fun palm tree brooches. There's two different sizes. I'm gonna sell those separately. And then this one's costume. I think it's Sarah Coventry. Yeah, Sarah Cove. So this one's just costume, but it's a Hamza hand with some little faux pearls. And it was only a dollar. So the jewelry wasn't a dollar most of it but everything had well over 50 percent margins so a lot of the rings i picked up for 25 dollars these earrings i think let's see if they're still have the price on no i pulled it off i want to say those were 20 or 25 dollars these i felt like were an incredible deal those were only 15 dollars and they're beautiful old stones so really really good pricing i think i might have paid 65 for the zuni necklace but that should be worth 150 so you know, not $2 for everything, but really good deals and really good margins. And of course, you know, I love to support estate sales, especially when, you know, the family's getting a lot of the money back and they're just needing to let go of things or downsize. I'm happy to spend a little bit of money when it comes to investing in quality pieces. That's kind of my whole thing is I, I try to buy things that are quality. Abigail and I saw a sign on the side of the road that said it was an antique sale. So we went inside. I didn't end up filming in there, but we both got a couple things. And one of the things I'm really excited that I found was this beautiful Chinese cloisonne picture frame. It's so tiny and I'm always looking for little miniature type things that I can send to my friend Roger in Paris. And so I think I'm going to put a picture of the two of us together in this frame and send this in his next gift box. I also got this Japanese lion and it's got this little hole in the center. It's big enough for you to put maybe a tiny little succulent plant in it, but I'm actually going to use it as a toothpick holder in my office because behind me is my office and the theme is lions. I'm sure you've seen that before. I'll insert a little clip right here of kind of a sneak peek. This is not finished. This is just a rough draft. Some of the artwork has to get reframed and I've got a lot of work to do, but everything in the room is basically lion themed, which I know most people probably wouldn't consider good design, but 
that space is a creative space for me to just go wild and enjoy the things that I love. So it's gonna have lots of lines in it. So I thought that this was gonna be perfect to put in the studio to put toothpicks in because sometimes you gotta clean your teeth and sometimes I like to have little dinner parties and have hors d'oeuvres and so I thought it'd be great to have a little toothpick holder. And I got this guy for only $2. She had $4 on him, but she gave him to me for only two. I have not decided yet if I wanna use this in the office behind me. I have a very Moroccan theme in there and I even have some gorgeous Moroccan hanging lights, but I don't know if the red works for me. I like having a lot of different color, but the red is just so contrasting with the blues and the greens that I have going on with the plants. Let me know in the comments below if you think I can pull off red in that space, or if you think this is something I should bring to the left coast flea, which by the way is only a week away from this weekend. I am so dang excited. July 15th and 16th is the Rose City Vintage Market and Left Coast Flea. We are doing a double market, so the Rose City Vintage Market is gonna be massive, it's going to be indoors and then we're going to have the left coast flea which is going to be an outdoor flea market attached your tickets will get you into both markets and it's going to be an absolute blast i'm going to be there jesse's going to be there i've got several friends from the italy group trips who are also going to be selling there and a lot of my favorite vintage vendors from the portland area so it's going to be an amazing fun weekend saturday and sunday and i hope to see you there I picked up these two keys because I don't know how many of you remember, but a few months back when I was actually up visiting Abigail, I found that beautiful marble clock, but it didn't have the key with it. So I picked up these, it was a dollar for both. Who knows, maybe they're gonna work. I figured it was worth the chance. So we are gonna go test this out and see if I can wind up that clock. All right, here are the two keys. This is the clock that I was mentioning. One of these has a little bit more of a square inside. And then the other one has more of a circle. It looks like both of those are squares. So we're gonna attempt to wind this baby up with a square. Please work. Oh man, talk about an epic fail. <laughs> it doesn't work. <sighs> okay, just kidding. No. I'm gonna keep looking, but it was worth a dollar. It was worth a dollar to try. I wanna thank Constant Contact for sponsoring today's video. You know that feeling when you have a beautiful photo, whether it's of a trip you've taken or some awesome vintage that you have found or decorated with, and you wanna post it on Instagram and you wanna engage your customers, but you just don't know what to say. And you're sitting there waiting for that caption to come to you. Well, everything changes when you use Constant Contact. Well, I'm about to blow your mind because you now do not have to worry about spending all of that time coming up with that caption. You can now enter in just a few words into the AI content generator and it will do all of the work for you. Here's an example of if I was to put in the dates of my vintage market and a few key words, it comes up with the most incredible things and you can easily take things out or add things in, completely customize it as well. The AI algorithms recognize content small business customers are most likely to engage with with. Then chat GPT technology is leveraged to automatically draft high quality copy that can be used across multiple marketing channels. When you're running a small business like I am, you have to wear all of the hats. Literally, I always wear hats, but you really do have to wear all of the hats in your business. You've got to be your own IT department. You've got to be marketing. You've got to be sales. You've got to be all of these things. And sometimes it can be exhausting by the time you get to your social media. When you're using Constant Contact, you can actually post to all of your platforms platforms at once. You can connect your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your Twitter account, make one post and it's going to post all of your accounts for you. That way, whatever your business is, it's going to free you up to spend more time doing what really matters and what only you can do. In my case, that's sourcing things, decorating with things and researching them. And to me, my time is precious. So giving me back even 20 minutes a day makes a huge difference. That's 20 more minutes I can go outside and play with my cat. Start your free risk-free trial today and use the promo code left coast for 30% off your first three months as a paying subscriber. Just click the link in the description below to get started with this offer. A huge thank you to Constant Contact for sponsoring today's video. 
Abigail and I could not leave these behind. We didn't end up buying all of them. There were two or three giant boxes full of them, but we did dig through and find our favorites. She got some of the larger sashes, and then I kind of went for the more collared ones. They're just way too incredible to be sitting in a box on the ground. They need to be reused. And I just am hoping that I can find somebody out there who does their own clothing design and could repurpose these maybe into collars on beautiful jackets or even on dresses. These are just too beautiful. I couldn't leave them behind. I was worried that if nobody bought them, they might end up in the dumpster. You never know when they do clear outs like that. So I just really was excited to get these and I'm hoping one of you out there is going to know how to repurpose these. They would make beautiful belts. They would make beautiful head pieces. I mean, there are so many different things that you could do. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to do it, but I wanted to rescue them. So if you are interested in these, I'm going to go ahead and have a few of them come to the vintage market so you can see them in person. And I'll list a few of them in my first Friday sale, which launches July 7th at 3 p.m. Pacific time, which I believe is actually going to be the day that this video is going to come out. Some of them even have the position that the person wearing it would have had in the secret society. So this says treasurer and they've got different titles in them. So it's kind of neat. I really hope somebody can repurpose these because look at this. I mean, this is all metal wire all woven it's so so beautiful and they're not in perfect shape because they're very old they're probably over a hundred years old I just think they're really cool and I hope somebody can do something really cool with them here's the deal if you buy these from my shop you have to send me a picture of what you do with them because I just I gotta know I gotta know someone's probably got some really great ideas out there I am weirdly excited about styling up my dress forms for the Left Coast Flea. I used to do vintage markets once a month for years when I was in a vintage mall space and doing flea markets. And I loved setting up my space. It's one of my favorite things to do, hanging everything from the tent and dressing up all of my dress forms. So this little red velvet vest is definitely going to end up on one of my dress forms at the Left Coast Flea. It's going to be fun to pick the rest of the outfit to go with this. Hopefully I will be seeing a lot of you in person at the market. You can't miss my space. As soon as you walk outdoors into the Left Coast Fleet, you're going to see a big banner that says Left Coast Revivals. And my space is actually going to be four spaces. I've been collecting so much vintage to bring to this market. So keep an eye out for me there. Otherwise, I'll be hopping around. I will be at the market from open to close both days. So make sure you find me and say hi. I'm not trying to oversell the market. I am just so excited and I'm really looking forward to meeting a bunch of you there. And I cannot believe this skirt. I got this skirt for $10. It is a beautiful 1970s designer Chessa Davis skirt. It is the most gorgeous blue velvet and it looks like it's never really been worn. It's an incredible condition. This is another clothing item that I'm definitely gonna be dressing up my dress forms with. I think I'm gonna put it with a beautiful lace top and of course a bunch of turquoise jewelry. These sell online for for well over a hundred dollars. This is gonna be a really hard one for me to let go, but I don't really wear long skirts. I always trip over them. I don't know why. So if you don't trip over your skirts, this beauty is gonna be coming to the left coast flea as well. I ended up getting both of the Levi jackets. These are actually really hard to find in our area because they are so popular. And I feel like everyone of all ages wears them. So that makes them even more in demand. But these are both perfectly worn and aged. You can tell they're vintage, but they're still in good shape and they've got a lot of years left. The other day, Jesse came over to the studio and he was like, what, you got vintage Levi coats? Usually he doesn't get too excited about all of my finds, but he tried both of them on and they fit him perfectly. And what's kind of awesome is that I like my vintage coats oversized, especially when they're like Levi jackets and I want to wear them over a t-shirt, but Jesse likes his a little bit more fitted. And so these are a men's large. So they actually fit me perfectly for the oversized look that I want. And they fit him perfectly for the kind of more snug fit. So I'm so sorry, but I'm not going to be selling either of these, but I am going to be going through my wardrobe because I do have a couple other Levi jackets that now I'm going to let go of because I'm always talking about upgrading and replacing. I have a couple Levi jackets that are just like a little bit too snug 
snug in my shoulders. So I'm gonna be bringing those to the left coast fully also and letting those go. I also got these beautiful vintage curtain tie backs. At least I'm pretty sure that's what they are. They look like it to me. They're really pretty and they're old and beaded. And this came out of one of the estate sales where they had a lot of Victorian things. So I'm not sure if these are Victorian, but they either way, they're very good quality and they're in good condition and they're beautiful. I love the color on them. These are gonna be for sale in my first Friday sale, July 7th. Hopefully you haven't already missed that. If you were ever worried about missing out on anything that you see me find in the episodes, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. You can visit my website, leftcoastrevivals.com and you can subscribe to my newsletter and then you will get a heads up when the sales launch. That's the easiest way to stay connected to everything that I've got going on. I know a lot of people sometimes comment and say, oh, I really wanted that. I missed out on that because the episode came out after the sale. And I always feel really bad because I know people fall in love with items when they see them on screen. So if you wanna make sure that you're not missing out on any items that I find, subscribe to my newsletter and I launch my sales the first Friday of every single month at 3 p.m. Pacific time. These are the beautiful beaded curtain tie backs. Do you think those are old? It's so hard with beads, how to date. They're really pretty though. I love the color on them, they're really pretty. I'm gonna pull out all of the items that I found thrifting, lay them all out on the table because I didn't talk about all of them today and I want you to see all of the goodies that I ended up bringing home with me. Here is a little glimpse of everything that I ended up picking up, estate sale shopping. Obviously the beautiful skirt is one of the best finds. I love that. I can't believe I got it for $10. It's so pretty. Another thing I wanted to show you because I don't remember if I got this on camera or not was this was the belt. Now I was actually wearing this hat when I was just filming and check it out. I just have a little clip in the back. This belt was broken. It's a beautiful beaded belt. And unfortunately, let's see, here's some of the belt. It was just ripped and falling apart. So I ended up cutting off that portion. All of this beadwork is in incredible shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this little section together here in the back because I just thought it would be beautiful to use on a hat. And I actually picked up this hat recently at an estate sale, and I think it looks perfect on there. This is a really nice, thin and lightweight hat. So adding the belt to it actually kind of weighs it down a little bit in case it's windy. It keeps it on my head a little bit better. So I think that's gonna look beautiful. Look at all of the beautiful beadwork. Got a nice Thunderbird right there. I love it. I love the design on it. So that was worth getting, and I think I only paid a dollar for it. I also got this really cool mid-century interlocking wooden sculpture piece. These are are very popular. I see them hung on walls in gallery walls. I also see people use these on bookshelves and they just kind of drape it across like this and have it just be a little wooden sculptural piece. I'm not even sure if that's what it was intended for when these were originally made, but I definitely have seen them gaining in popularity recently. So that was a really good find and that was just a few dollars. I just got this for myself. I believe I ended up just paying 50 cents for it. And I like having wind chimes when I'm sitting in my backyard. And this one had a nice little, let's see, there we go. Nice little ring to it. Just needs to be cleaned up. And I got this beautiful piece of Raku pottery. Colors on it are just incredible. And it's signed on the bottom. Let me turn that around. I actually haven't had a chance to look this up yet. What does that say? Does that say Matthews? Or is that a V? Michaels? Okay, I'm gonna have to do some research on that. Sorry, I didn't have time, I've been sick. So I didn't have time to do as much research as I normally do before I show you everything. I picked up these little tongs for a dollar and then this little brass sword knife, which says Istanbul on it. It's got a little dragon. Oh, and I got this little Danish candle holder. I think this was only like two bucks, something like that. It was only a couple bucks and it's signed Denmark, gorgeous. Some cute little flamingo mugs. Those were $2 each. I think I'm gonna bring those to the flea market because they look like they might be a little bit fragile for shipping. So I'll bring those to the flea. So yeah, the jewelry is all gonna be coming to the first Friday sale, July 7th. And even if it's past that date right now, don't hesitate to go look on the website because you never know. Maybe your favorite piece, somebody hasn't bought it yet. So it's still there for you. And a couple of these items will be coming to the flea market, such as the clothing and definitely the cups. So overall, it was an amazing, amazing day.
before I sign off, I have one last thing to tell you. Our London trip is coming up this September 6th through 13th. We are gonna be vintage shopping every single day of this amazing trip. I'm so excited to get to meet more of you. Our Italy group trips were an absolute blast. We had so much fun getting to know over 40 of you and London is coming up right around the corner. So if you have been considering coming on the London group trip with us, there's only a few spots left and you have to book by July 17th. That's the final date. After July 17th, we are not accepting any more bookings. If you are looking to do a group trip in 2024 with us, we have the Japan trip live for booking. I will link that down below and that's going to be an amazing trip. We're going to try all the food. We're going to see a lot of historical sites in Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka, and we're going to be doing vintage shopping and flea markets in between that itinerary. So if you have always wanted to go to Japan, but you didn't know where to go and you didn't know what to do, I've planned the entire trip for you. All you got to do is book and come on the adventure with us. And I am getting ready to announce and launch a fall 2024 group trip as well. So don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter because you will be the first to know as soon as that trip gets announced. Thanks again for hanging out with me today and letting me share my estate sale haul with you. And I will see you in the next video, hopefully with my voice recovered. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day.